Hello again and welcome to another episode of Rain Plays. Today we are at Coringburg Cottage in the countryside neighborhood of Windenburg. The Munches live there. Mila Gunther is her young adult son. Wolfgang is her teenage son. And Lucas is the little baby boy. She is a foodie. She's good and cheerful. Gunther is clumsy, a bookworm, and creative. Wolfgang was evil, gloomy, and mean-spirited. I changed that to a collector. He's still gloomy, but I changed it to a loner. And then Lucas is creative and loves the outdoors. The house traits I gave them were chef's kitchen, homey, and good schools. I did that because in the bio, uh, Mila's having trouble here. Gunther refuses to move out, and of course, Wolfgang is on his way to perdition. So I felt sorry for her. I built the whole house around her and the little boy, and I also gave them a makeover. You'll notice it at the end. Except Gunther was being a big butt, and he refused to change out of his formal wear. So I just said, fine, you know what? You want to stand there in the heat in that outfit? You go right ahead. Uh, the house itself is, um, how would you say? Uh, well, I built it around an image I found on uh, Google Images. I typed in German cottages and then I selected old. It's not an exact replica. I had major difficulty with... Um, the upper portion. There were a lot of um, like bump outs and stuff. And I tried as best I could based on um, what I saw, you know, working on the roof and stuff. So other than that, um, if you don't mind, I would like to go off topic. I hope that's okay with you. I I know I've mentioned before that I used to have an old YouTube channel and it was about writing uh, romance novels, romance authors, romance books and one of my segments was going after commenters who were being unfair and unduly cruel and leaving negative comments and giving low star scores when it was obvious that they either hadn't read the book or they just didn't care for this author or there was something just vindictive about the reason they did it and believe me I'm not being you know self-appointed here I'm not being holier than thou I've been doing this for years and when you've read enough comments in this particular field you begin to profile you can tell who's being sincere and who hasn't even bothered reading the book. They're just there to cause trouble. And I always pointed those out in a segment in my old YouTube channel. Well, today, uh, not today, yesterday, I started reading from one of my favorite authors. It's her latest, well, I don't even know if it's her latest, but I just, I picked it up. Whatever, it's called The Wallflower Quit. Oh my goodness, A Wallflower Christmas. And this is about um, one of the original Wallflower's younger brother, Rafe, Raphael. He has to come to England to meet a woman his father has picked for him. And again, they're American and they're wealthy and he's, he's a little spoiled. Well, his dad and mom were kind of weird. They had weird ideas. Just know that this is Regency era, which is what? The early 1800s? And if you're going to read a Regency romance, you need to know going in that things are not the way they are in 2020. All right? They're just not, that's not how life was back then. But you chose a Regency romance novel. You're the one who has to deal with it, not the author. 
opinion or not, it just seems to make sense to me. And I, I'm not alone. People do agree with me, so <laughs> I don't feel too nervous about this. But I have to read this one comment on the book. It says, while the previous books had forceful men and desperate women, this one goes into rapey territory. A line from the hero. This is how we court girls in America. We grab them and kiss them. And if they don't like it, we do it again, harder and longer, until they surrender. When the heroine says she'll tell, he says he'll deny it. Not a good read in the hashtag me too era. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. <laughs> it makes me laugh, but at, at the same time, it makes me so angry. I just want to throttle people like this. You're going to mention the Me Too era about a Regency novel. A fictional Regency era novel. But this, okay, this boils down to the mentality that people actually live their life according to what they read in fiction novels. And I'm not making this up. I've read that way too many times to know that it's definitely true. There are people out there who have this mentality. They're going to read a fictional romance novel to figure out their own life. And that, that floors me even more. But here's the thing. This young little college student who learned all sorts of big words in one of her women's studies classes gave this two stars because of that asinine opinion. And that's when I get upset. Because even if she is a very famous, very popular romance writer, it's undeserved for her hard work. With that kind of, that is a personal opinion based on your feminist, modern, convoluted way of thinking. And it it's unfair to the author. It's wrong to do that. And if you're stupid enough, I'm sorry, I know that sounds brutal, but if you are dumb enough to let a fictional romance novel dictate your real life actions, you're the one who needs to rethink everything about your life, not the author. And you have no right putting a detrimental mark on her hard work because you're being ridiculous and you're not thinking. What you're doing is parroting your women's studies college professor. You're not thinking. It just, it makes me so angry. Why did you read this book? And here's the thing. They read the book. I would not put this past them. They read the book so that they could run into their class and show their professor just how awful these books are. She did not get past chapter two because that's when that little incident occurred. And if you've read enough of this woman's work, you know it was deliberate. She seven times out of ten she will deliberately make you not want to like the male protagonist he'll do something clumsy he'll do something unthinking he'll do something because he's irritated she does that that's one of her tropes and then the female protagonist is all bent out of shape and then it takes them a while to get things ironed out 
and then there's the ATA. That is a romance novel. And anybody who reads romance novels knows that. Anybody who reads her, Lisa Kleypas, knows darn well that that's deliberate. He, he did that on purpose to get a rise out of the woman. And it worked. It's not who he is. It's not how he behaves. He's there to learn uh, the British customs. So yeah, he's going to keep his American persona. That is manly. Why would he fake anything? He has to remain true to himself if you're going to truly fall in love with this guy. And she knows it. The author knows it. She's not stupid. There have been a couple of her novels where I absolutely hated. I'm like, there's no way you're going to get me to like this guy. There's no way. And sure enough, midway through, I'm absolutely in love with him. And it's like, how could I have ever doubted <laughs> She does it every single time. She, that just proves how amazing an author she is. So for that little girl to quote a Twitter hashtag, that, oh my gosh, that burns me up. You and your silly feminist, modern way, liberal way of thinking. It just, oh, it's so irritating. And honey... When you, 20 years from now, you are going to be cringing. I hope and pray for you that you cringe at this memory of being such a teacher's parrot and running with this garbage. You know, I went back to college a second time in the, um, well, 2009 to 2013. And not only was it a liberal college, but my God goodness it went from when I the first time I went to college where the professors taught you what you needed to know on a subject this second time around it was opinion and it was all liberal democratic convoluted stupidity that these professors are cramming down these kids throats and the kids are just lapping it up and I, I was stunned book burning book banning they're uh, they're going for it and the kids are believing it I I was terrified to be honest with you I kept because my son was with me at the same time he was going through college the first time when we were had just happened to be going to the same school because it's a teaching college and I uh, I just kept looking at him going, you better not be falling for this crap. And he'd laugh, you know. He goes, Ma, you raised me better than that. I'm like, that's beside the point. This is ridiculous and it needs to stop. Them professors have no right telling a child of that impressionable age how to think, what to believe. That's your opinion. That's got nothing to do with the, what these kids are paying here to learn and you hear it more and more especially in these types of novels in the comment section rapey <laughs> I don't even think that anybody knows what that word truly means anymore because it's been stretched so far and again you know don't misquote me I'm not saying rape is good I'm not you know that's stupid to even believe that someone would like that. Well, again, hey, you know, somebody might. That's not the point. The point is this girl picked up a Regency romance novel and had the audacity to get upset about those lines. It, because of the 21st century hashtag me too movement, which is ridiculous the movement and the opinion are both ridiculous and yeah that's my opinion and I might scare some people away and that is fine that is absolutely fine because again if you're you have a right to your opinion I also have a right to mine that's the way I've always looked at it but everybody can't always be right 
And if you think I'm wrong, that's fine. But, you know, if I think someone else is wrong, that's fine too. And that little girl is so wrong. But it, the, again, getting back to it, the whole point of it is you have no right to destroy someone's credibility because of an ignorant opinion at something as stupid as that. If you were reading a contemporary novel and that occurred, yeah, yeah, I see a problem there. Even though I find it incredibly hard to believe that anyone actually, truly, and honestly reads a fictional novel and it has any intention of basing their real life around that. I, I cannot wrap my head around that thinking. It just, it blows my mind. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Okay, I just, I'm sorry. But it's, it. like I said, I just, I, I can't let stuff like that go. I guess because I'm invested in it, I write them myself. And I hope that if someone were to make that kind of a remark, because you're not supposed to read your own comments. Well, let me rephrase that. A lot of authors and publishers tell you to ignore the comments. I personally disagree because what you want is the constructive criticism. And you got to weed through the nonsense like that in order to find the constructive criticism. Oh my goodness. Here we go again. Um, too much telling, not enough showing, lots of, you know, editing issues, which your publisher should take care of as, you know, you're paying an editor to go over your book. Things like that you need to know, or just there's not enough character development. There's, I, I had no idea what, how, there's no world building skills here. Things like that you need to know. So reading the comments does help in that regard. You just have to have uh, thick skin if you're going to rise above the nonsense. So here's the after of their uh, makeovers. And again, there's Gunther in that silly outfit. I gave her new hair and I updated her glasses and I gave her better makeup and I took them nasty vampire eyes off of Wolfgang. I still gave him makeup, but not that severe black it looked like he got punched in both eyes. And here I apologize. I went the wrong way. I stopped. I'm like, oops, too late now. I'm not going to go back. And I made the mistake again with that basketball court. I set a basketball down. And apparently you're not supposed to do that because a basketball magically appears in their hand when they go there to play. I know. <laughs> I keep forgetting that. Where's the basket? I guess the basketball's in their back pocket or something. But you don't need to set a basketball out on the court. I'll try to remember. Now this, the before, if you noticed, was a game room. I took that away from them. I did give them a littler game room in the house. But I told you, I made this for her. And this is her special little out... Well, I was going to say outhouse. <laughs> That's not what I mean. But... She's a chef and she's a foodie and she works as a chef. I didn't quite get where she worked or anything, but so I gave her this room here with the ta-da cupcake machine. So I've got her little sewing table out there and this and she can do whatever she wants with it. So that's for Mila. Um, there was something else that just popped into my head and then it popped out. That's supposed to be the lake view, but you really can't see it. I hope the audio is in time with the video. I apologize if it's not. What was I going to say? I don't remember. I'm mumbling. I'm sorry. I didn't put anything in those pots, but she's going to need lots of uh, fruit and vegetables because she is a, is a cook. She's already up to level 8, and I just started playing them. I did play them for two sim days. They were fun. 
I, you know, this would be a family that I would want to take care of. It was interesting. Um, I think I mentioned already about finding this farmhouse off of Google Images. The, the, the roofing, it was like one roof and then another roof and then there was a window in there and I just could not get it to work. So I tried as best I could to duplicate, replicate that with a window. And this was the best I could come up with. So, But we are coming up on the end here. I hope you enjoyed it. La landscaping wasn't too difficult. There were only, you know, pockets of it. I just didn't want to impede the view of the lake, even though you really can't see it from ground level, but... All right, well, it looks like this is about it here. I really appreciate that you watched this video. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.